I've been building my own throttle extension for flight simulation, and I thought I'd make a video showing all the different pieces, elements, parts that I found over the, the last couple years putting these things together, especially those that work well in VR. So I kind of have decided at this point, I'm going to build everything I uh, make now using these Leo Bobner boards rather than doing Arduino. To play in DCS, um, you can use DCS BIOS, but your board has to be programmed specifically for a particular plane. And I want something that I can um, just have recognized like controller buttons, just like the Verpal Throttle has all those buttons and switches that you can just bind in the game. That's the way I want my controllers to work. So these Leo Bodner boards are more expensive than Arduino boards, but they allow you to do just that. It recognizes all of your switches, you know, in Windows. You don't have to program Arduino to talk to a specific module. So these are what I'm going to use as I program. So I found, like, basically you're going to have rotary switches, toggle switches, uh, buttons, and, like, I have hats and different things in here as well, and potentiometers. Those are really the types of switches that I'm going to be using in mine. So first off, especially for Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, you use a lot of encoders for sure, especially these dual rotary encoders. First off, the encoders that I have discovered that I really like, um, these are made by Born, and they're um, high detent, meaning you feel a lot of force as you turn them. Like, you can feel them. They don't go so fast. In fact, I always buy the kind that are 16 detents all the way around. I'm pretty sure they range from 16 to 24 clicks before you make a 360-degree turn. So I go for the high detent and 16. Just It feels more. If you have more like tactile feel to that. So that's what I prefer. And then I've gotten rotary encoders from different places. Uh, the ones from Bits and Droid I don't have here because I did not end up using them ever. And they were 3D printed and not very aligned. They were crooked. But there's these other two that I found. This is the one from Prop Wash Sim, which they're great. They're just kind of small. I found they work fine. Um, I did have some issues with the push button, and so I've actually stuffed them a little bit. You probably can't see with like a little shreds of cardstock so that they stick out further because I was having it get stuck. I think it was just something was happening resistance wise. But these are okay, they're just small, especially the, the tip of this one. Just feels small when you're using it. These here are the Leo Bodner ones. Um, they're the Elma, I cannot remember. I'll have it all in the description. But these are the same ones that Knobster uses, um, as far as I can tell. And they're nice and big, and the click is very satisfying. It feels right. So these are what I would recommend. They Maybe they feel like they're really big, but if you compare the size, I mean, it is significant. This just feels so much better to use. I find these to feel too small. So either way, you know, with all of these parts, you're probably going to need to solder. And that might be a whole nother story, but most people that are going to try this kind of thing are usually okay at soldering. It's nice. The Leo Bodner boards actually have to just a little pinch and push in, but you're going to end up having to solder connecting things to your to your parts just about every one of these. Not always. All right, then there's toggle switches. Um, I've gotten a lot of toggle switches through Amazon and ended up returning them and being like, I'm not going to use these. The first rendition of my throttle extension I use different ones but I found these which I think they, they feel just like the verbal um, toggle switches they're a little bit longer the throw I feel is better and they come in different different formats so this is the, like on the verbal can throttle where it is stays in the center and has momentary turns right so you can kind of just it's always neutral and this is great for loading in and out of a game um, you don't have to worry about your controller having to remember what position it was in or making sure it's in the right place. You can basically just, you know, flip it up like that's like moving it up. And if, <laughs> you know, you ended one game with your switch up and you spawn back in and the switch is down, normally you would have to flip it up and then actually go and flip it down. So this kind of makes it that way. But, of course, you can get ones that are permanently set, depending on what you're going to do. For DCS BIOS, I find these to be pretty good because of how that reads the on and the off. I think as a generic joystick controller, I prefer this because this is actually a button and this is a button. Whereas this kind is an, an on-off. So there's the 
the signal's passing through, the signal's not passing through. Um, so this really is only recognized as one button by the Leo Bodner board turning on and off. But when you wire this one up, it's two buttons. So you can do it as like increase flaps, decrease flaps. It doesn't have to be a set flaps position. You know, if you have multiple ones, it just can step it a little at a time. But then there is this option as well, which has three pins. So this is a button. It has, you know, two separate buttons. It's not like one is activated and one is deactivated. This activates one button. This activates another. So these are more like the red switches on the Verpal um, throttle. And you can see this is the same type of thing. You can get switches in almost any kind of form factor, but you can see two pins. So this is going to have one on, one off. I use this for my setup in Microsoft Flight Simulator with the G1000. I will install one of these at the top of the control panel and have all the buttons and some of these knobs there to kind of simulate the feel of a G1000. And like I'll switch, if I have it this way, I'll program it using software um, to, when it's this way, it's recognizing the MFD. When it's this way, it's recognizing the PFD. So I'll use it like as an option. Um, it takes a little programming to get that to happen. Um, but I found these recently on Etsy, little toggle extensions. Whoops, so you could pop one of these on to your toggle switch, right? They go all the way. There you go. See, and that's like the lights, typically the layout. So that way when you're using them, you can, I'm, I'm doing everything in VR. So it's nice to be able to feel that I have the right one, you know? So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'll put the link to Etsy because they're really nice because they're kind of flexible and rubbery. They, um, they give a little so that they fit really well. So, um, I also ordered the larger, there was another one that was a larger handle. I think I might use the bigger one. I'm not sure. So there's toggle switches, potentiometers. I have a lot of issues with, um, especially buying them on Amazon. I even bought some off of Mouser, which is where I got these rotary encoders, the high detent ones, and they were made by Born. and it was an eight pack and only two of them did not have faults to them. I just, these are actually the ones from Born right here. I just found that like I was having connection issues where these pins are loose inside the housing and when they wiggled, they would disconnect. So it would constantly be changing where it is, but a potentiometer is nice because it's going to have a set space. This is going to use your axes. You can't use a board like this for these. You've got to get the larger board, which I am already started to install in this thing. But I have the box right here, the larger board. This is the, the model and it has, um, it has a section for analog. So potential potentiometers, you know, axes. So it has set positions that it reads as you turn. Some of them have detents, like this has a detent in the middle, it's sitting in the middle. Some other ones do not. I am, you know, just like this is an example of one. If this little pin moves, the entire potentiometer stops working. It like stops reading, that's the ground pin. Um, so I went ahead, I, I haven't found a good option, but I went ahead and ordered ones that are pre-wired because these pins really are small to be soldering with, you know, and so some of it could be soldering issues so I went ahead and bought some pre-wired ones, and then if I have to extend the wire, I'll just cut them and solder the extension of the wire. So I'll let you know how that goes. But I um, had them all installed, started using them. I'm like, what is going on? These things are finicky. And if you just tapped any of these pins, they started to go loose, and you know they were soldered well. It's just something is up with the connection. So I'd watch out for these. Um, you just need good, good quality ones. And once off of Amazon, do not seem to be reliable. Then there's buttons. So I found this button is really good for, especially in VR. They have a nice tactile feel to them. There's a click, you know? And um, they're, they're kind of substantial. They sit out, you can actually see one right here installed, over here. They sit up from the from the installed, but the, the fact that they click, they're nice and they have like shape to them. I like those. These are good too. Um, they're, they're louder and bigger, but they, they do the job. You get them square and round, I think, as well. Uh, they come in different varieties sometimes, especially in DCS BIOS where you have more options. You can do the kind that stay on, right? And then you can get the kind that are just momentary. So there's that. Um, I've never, with, with the way I've been building, I'm not using PCBs to mount all of my buttons. I'm, I'm not 3D printing anything and creating covers and, you know, spacing out panels and so forth. I'm just trying to build something more generic. I'm not trying to match anything in particular. So these PCB tactile switches, you know, you got to 
I guess you can find a way to panel mount them, but I don't, I don't really ever find any panel mount versions of these. You can get a panel mount board to put them in, but um, for me, I'm trying to panel mount everything. But these tactile switches, you put buttons on them, it's just got a figure, like if I was trying to panel mount it, you'd want the button to ascend above the, your surface. So this would have to be mounted exactly the right position so it stays in place, because it's not mounting to the panel. It's mounting to a PCB behind it that you would then mount to, or you know, install, which is like this. This is a Leo Bodner hat switch. In fact, I have discovered, I mean, they come with these little nubs, but I discovered messing with my throttle. These, I believe these might be the exact ones that they use on the verbal um, controllers because the hat, this is the same size. I don't know if there's some kind of standard thing, Whoop. but the, um, the tip of them is exactly the same fit for the verbal hats. So I ordered a couple extra hats from Verpal, like replacements. I'm going to mess around with maybe adding a hat to a controller somehow. But like I said, you're always going to get into soldering with these things, whether you're pushed, putting pins in there or just soldering directly to the board. So you're going to have to have some of that. But yeah, these I think might be the exact ones that Verpal is using. I've never taken my throttle apart to see, but it looks like it. And then I've, I tried these. I've never used them. These are five-way hat switches off of Amazon. They actually do click five directions. So you just have to find some way to mount it, get it soldered up, and then put something on the end of it to make your own hat switch. But my um, controller is going to be built basically out of, let's see, I'm going to use the momentaries. I'm going to be using these push buttons. And I'm going to use rotary encoders with different types of uh, covers on them. And that's really all I'm going to use. I'm playing in VR. I want to be able to put my hand down and feel where things are going to go. I did find one other really cool switch. Let me bring this over to show you. I'm going to have to adjust the camera here. Um, I use these for jettison buttons right here. I found those on Amazon. It just mounts. I'll show you the back here. It just mounts. It's kind of, it's kind of significant on the back, how it works, you know, but, um, it's really cool. It feels more authentic. And when you're playing by feel in VR, that's what you want. So this is an example of all of them. Got my momentary switch. This is going to be my landing gear. And then this right here might be a jettison select. It's a rotary encoder. So you can also click it. All right, this is just a straight button. And then here is potentiometer install. Most of them come with these, you know, knobs you put on them. You can buy your own knobs or get your own knobs pre 3D printed. And then down here will be some of my buttons. Right, switches, uh, have things along the sides so that you can get different kind of caps for rotary encoders. I just love these rotary encoders that they have such a good feel to them. You know, so when I'm playing at my throttle, if I place this down here, let me see if I can get it out of the way. I'm using the throttle, you know, here, and I'm, you know, I'm sitting basically over here. I can just kind of reach down. I, I like my layout is designed to where I can feel, okay, there's a switch and a button. So, you know, I might make these similar actions, but I can feel it out really easily. The spacing, put my hand down, I can feel the two switches and then my buttons are in front of it. These are all going to be potentiometers, which I thought I was going to be good with the ones installed, but they didn't work right. So I had to buy better ones Then reach my hand around the side or, you know, put, put the throttle up, reach over. There's my, with my nifty little knob installed. So it's easy to feel. You know, I'm flying along, turn the HMD on. That's what this, uh, this knob here is going to be for right here. Select the jettison. So it's, I just find it to be convenient. I'm also putting a panel at the top, which I'll show you when I build that. It's going to go above. And it all mounts to my Monster Tech. So these are the things that I'm using. I think I've found that they work the best. I'll put all the links to all the different things where I bought them or where to find them in the description.